Okay, so in this video, you're going to learn how to convert a number from standard notation to scientific notation. Converting a number from standard notation to scientific notation is condensing a larger number into a smaller number multiplied by 10 raised to a certain power. So first of all, what are scientific notation numbers used for? Scientific notation numbers apply when we are writing a huge number, such as a mole number. Another example would be writing the population of humans here on Earth. One mole of atoms equals 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms. If we were to write this number in standard form, it would be 602 with 21 zeros after it. Scientific notation allows us to write this number in a much more manageable form. In summary, scientific notation helps us write a number in a shorter way where we don't have to write so many digits all the time. If we did have to write the entire number, such as this example here, then it would, cons it would consume a lot, of, a lot of time. Some things to keep in mind whenever going from standard notation to scientific notation are the following. The exponent goes up if you move the decimal to the left. The exponent goes down if you move the decimal to the right. Here's your decimal. Move to the left, you will have a positive exponent. Here's your decimal again. Move to the right, you have a negative exponent. This number right here is the one that we're going to work with first. This number is written in standard notation. The first thing that you have to keep in mind before you even do anything is realize how many sig figs is this number good to. This number is good to only three sig figs. So with that being said, your answer also needs to be good to three sig figs. So now let's convert from standard to scientific notation. The first thing you have to do, you start with the last digit on the right side. So here's your last digit that is on the right side of this entire number. The last digit on the right side. Now you're going to visualize a decimal point on the right side of this digit. So we're going to imagine that there is a, a decimal right here. And then we're going to move the decimal to the left side, digit by digit, until there's only one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal. A non-zero digit is basically any whole number that is not a zero. So let's go ahead and start here and let's go all the way to the left side until there's only one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And 13 okay so we're gonna write 2.53 2.53 and times 10 to the 13 power notice that the exponent of 13 indicates the number of times we move our decimal so the amount of times we went from here to here was 13 times so that's where we get the 13 from um, and then I know my final answer can only have uh, three sig figs because when I saw this number, I knew it was only good to three sig figs. Now let's work with this example here. Okay, so remember what we have to do first. You start with the last digit on the right side. This example for the number 900 is the zero. And then now we're going to imagine that there's a decimal to the right side of this digit. So we're imagining that there's a decimal here. And then we're going to move the decimal to the left side digit by digit until there's only one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal. So here we go. One and two. So my, my decimal is going to go right there. And... 
remember what I had told you in the beginning. Um, when you look at your given number, you have to keep in mind how many sig figs is this number good to? It's only good to one sig fig. Okay, so I'm only going to write a nine. You don't write nine and then a decimal because the decimal is technically understood to be there already, even though you didn't write it or I didn't write it. So it's just nine times 10 to the second power. Now over here, this number is good to four sig figs. And the reason it's good to four sig figs is because we have a decimal. We have a decimal. So that makes our trailing zeros become sig figs, become four, be, may, it helps us have four sig figs for this number. So therefore, if my giving number has four sig figs, my answer also needs to be good to four sig figs. So you put your decimal here, you move to the left side, one, two, three, there's my three, and then I'll have 8.800 times 10 to the third power. And then, and then for this here, for this number here, I'm going to have 3.65 times 10 to the fifth power. And for this number here, I'm going to have 2.15 times 10 to the eighth power. 